So as I was contemplating the meaning of life the other day, as I typically do, I said, what is it that this world needs in this day and age? And after I took a nice long sip of this mediocre coffee, it came to me. The world needs a crochet vlog. Are you ready? Are you going to be my friend? Let's have fun. Hello makers, I'm Nicole from Woven Tales Designs and you are watching my newest YouTube channel, Crochet Chronicles. Creativity, crocheting, and all things yarn are some of my biggest passions in life. And I think it's time to share with the world my design process. So I invite you on this vlog journey and let's see what my next big project is. All right guys, so welcome to season one, episode one of Crochet Chronicles. I cannot believe we're here. Honestly, I thought this would take forever because I've had this idea for a very long time. I'm sure as all makers say about their next big thing. But this is super true. I love YouTube. It's one of my biggest forms of entertainment. And as I'm watching YouTube, I thought in my head, you know what? I think YouTube needs some entertainment. I think it's time to actually share all these things that I do with you all. As you know, I have an Etsy shop called Woven Tales Designs, and that is my main source of creativity. And I really want to branch out of what I normally design and make. So, hence the Crochet Chronicles era. On this channel, you're going to see I have three different... Look at that lighting. Look at that lighting. Three. Three. Count them. I have three steps to my design press that you're going to see. Step number one is visualization. I must sit down and draw and sketch out and look at pictures of my design muse so that I'm able to see what this project might turn out to be. Step number two is my hunting process. So going out and finding my materials is really important for me. I can't just create something without a material. I guess that's self-explanatory. Step number three, guys, is my trial and error. That is where you're gonna see the most drama with my design process. I cannot tell you how much a perfectionist I actually am. I go through all kinds of roller coasters of emotions when I'm creating. So you're gonna see some flops and you're gonna see some victories and we're gonna have a lot of fun. I hope you guys are ready and I'm super excited so I'd like to get this thing rolling, yes? So, without further ado, today's project is dedicated to a domestic goddess need. I am creating for you a skillet handle cover. I could do a lot of cooking and the skillet pan is literally necessity for me when I'm cooking bacon or when I'm making a steak and then I throw that puppy in the oven. Um, and obviously a skillet is a very hot, hot tool to be using. So it requires a cover to go on that handle so you don't burn your hand as you're gripping and moving that thing around. Um, and anytime I create something new, I have to make it not just basic, it has to be something fun, something new and magical. So this design is also going to tie in one of my favorite characters from the Hundred Acre Woods, Eeyore. Yay! <laughs> He's super cute. What's not to love about a satirical and kind of emo donkey, yeah? That's today's project. Uh, we're also going to be using, hi Cairo, bye Cairo. We're also going to be using a very fun, oh, there's my cat Jaxie in the background too. Isn't this fun? Animals everywhere. Can't control them. I try. They're trained, but not really like I think they are. So we are going to be using all of our elements that we can to make this a fun and simple project, but we are going to work with some great color, some great yarn, and we are definitely going to be using a extra design element that not a lot of people know about or use. You'll see this as we go through our materials later on, okay? So without further ado, let's move on to the visualization process of this process. Hi, Cairo. All right guys, welcome to the visualization portion of this vlog channel. So here is where I sit down with my bullet journal that I keep all of my artistic ideas and ventures in and I sketch out what I'd like this design to look like um, in the end result. Obviously with trial and error, we'll see later, you know, there might be tweaks along the way and there might not be, but we are going to try our hardest to visualize what we see now. Here's the fun fact about Eeyore. 
His name is loosely based on the British Cockney dialect version of the phrase hee-haw, which in that dialect probably sounds like e-aw, which is, or eeyore. Uh, and then I chose gray for him in this version of the skillet handle cover because that's how he was originally portrayed. Later on, Disney turned him blue once they got success with the films, but I like gray better, yeah. Um, so with this, oh, earthquake, thank you. Thank you, Mad Cats. They love playing around with me. And of course, I can't just design something with only yarn. I have to use a different element. And this time for this project, I chose something called Insole Bright. It is a polyester fabric that's been needle punched through a reflective metallized polyfilm. Um, and I chose this because it adds just another safe approach to a skillet handle cover. The lining reflects the heat back into the handle of the skillet and it keeps your hand even more protected and it protects the actual skillet cover itself. So. I will show you later on how I attach this to the crocheted base and we'll go from there. All right, stay tuned for the hunt. All right, so I am off to hunt for my supplies and I can't do anything successfully if I have not yet had anything to eat. So I'm going to get a sandwich at my favorite cafe and then we are off to the craft stores. It is time to go hunting. I am full and happy. Let's go. So for the first stop of the hunt, we have come to Hobby Lobby. Oh, it's windy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this place. Look how pretty. Um, so we're in West Palm Beach. Um, it's my second home. I live in Orlando and I live in West Palm Beach. And I truly love this area somewhat better because, I mean, come on guys, look at that storefront. So let's go inside. So we're in this aisle at Hobby Lobby and we're in Hobby Lobby because they actually carry this brand of cotton yarn that I've known for a while. It's the I Love This Yarn brand and I love this because it's super soft. And I don't want this whole pot skillet handle cover to be scratchy to the touch. I want it to feel a little bougie too. So uh, hopefully we'll find it in this location. We're looking for black, we're looking for gray, and we're also looking for that cute carnation pink or kind of somewhat of a warm pink color. All right, so let's see what we find. This is aisle one. Hmm. black and they have the gray and I think I can see straight over here ah okay so there's kind of a good amount of pinks to choose from so let's see our options here here's the black hey and here's 
here's the gray options. Hey. Don't know if I want to go with the dark or the light gray. And down here we have a lot of pink options. Um, let me put my thing down. Okay, so we have rosy number two. And we have this one's very, it's like a deep color. It's rosebud. Mm, that's gonna have to be rosy number two. Why did I wink? I don't know. So these are the colors we're gonna go with. We're gonna stick to our guns. We're gonna commit. We're not gonna question. I always have second thoughts on colors. That's like my biggest struggle as a designer. So we are going to run with these. We're gonna put them in the cart and, or basket. And we're gonna head to the cashier so we can start working. Yay! All right, guys, welcome to the trial and error portion of this vlog journey. So um, every time we get to this point in the vlog series, we are going to walk you through all of the things that went right, all the things that went wrong, and we're also going to cover some of the tea because this is my new catchphrase, not spell crochet without the tea. Insert cricket sound here. <laughs> Anyway, so we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of this project. Now, Eeyore is, like I said, a very sweet character, but he is also a character that is a classic Disney character. So I really wanted to do it some justice here. I wanted to pick stitches that were easier to, to look at, things that weren't like a hot mess. Um, and I wanted to pick something that was a tightly woven stitch because I honestly feel that those kinds of stitches make these finished products look the best, especially when you're, they're in your kitchen, you're using them a lot. Um, it's better to have something that is a little more put together. I would probably rate this project maybe a beginner to intermediate level project. Um, I got it done really quickly, but I do crochet quickly as well. I've been doing this for at least seven years now, so if this is not, you know, if this looks like it's gonna be too difficult, and that's why I put these videos out there so you're able to kind of see what it might be to create it, then edge off of it, get some simpler projects under your belt, and then jump back into this project. Um, but let's get right into it. I did have some bumps along the way. Overall, this was a pretty easygoing project for me, but I definitely had some bumps in the road. Unfortunately, I had an incident with my Furls crochet hook. I'll get to that later on in the video, but um, I was kind of sad. I almost shed a tear. I was like, not my Furls hook, because that thing is like, it's like a top of the line hook. It's not something that you just go buy at Joanne Fabrics for like a dollar. It's not an aluminum hook. It's a hand-turned wooden hook. So anyway, let's get right into it, yeah? All right, guys, so now that we have all of our materials gathered together, let's move on to the very first section of this construction of this process. Now, when I was first creating it, I was like, okay, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? That lining was important for me to get cut out, and in the pattern, I do provide you a template so you don't have to like make any guesswork or go over to your skillet handle and kind of just like jerry-rig it with like a pen and all that craziness. You don't need to do that. I kind of fixed that for you. So for this one, I took out that template. Um, I didn't really need to tape it down to get it started. I just traced it with a pen and then I went ahead and I did, I cut those pieces out. Um, and then I also on that template, you'll see some broken lines, dotted lines um, within the um, parameter of the original cover handle template. And that is a sewing guide for you. Once I cut those out, I went ahead and I put the dots on to kind of let me know, you know, as I'm sewing these two pieces together, where do I need to make sure my stitches stay consistent so that it's not gonna be like wonky when I go to slip it on to the final um, skillet. 
Have to confess, this is my confession number one. I was super stubborn and I said, oh, I'm just gonna use a ballpoint pen. What do I need to use a fabric pen for? Fabric pens are for sissies. You need to use a fabric pen. This material, this Insul Bright material is very, um, the, the, the actual like material of itself kind of comes off a little bit as you're working with it, as you're like tracing it and whatnot with the pen. So when that happens and I added a regular ballpoint pen to the situation, I got ink all over my hand. I mean, I, I literally had it like on the tip of my finger and I had it on like the side of my hand. I mean, I looked like a complete disaster. If you are doing this project, please, please, please do not use a ballpoint pen or gel-based pen. Use a fabric pen because it will not smudge and then you won't have this drama like I did. So that is confession number one. Golly, and I don't know if you can tell in this video, but when I fed the thread through the needle and I um, then tied a little knot at the end and went to go use it, I think I like used too long of a piece of thread because I was having serious thread drama. I felt like I spent half this time and it took so long because I was trying to unravel the thread drama. I would recommend you not use such long pieces of thread if you are choosing to sew this by hand. All right, so we're getting to the part where we put that batting away. We're gonna save it for later when we insert it back into the base, the crocheted base of this cover handle, hander cover, cover, cover hander handle cover. I can't speak. So once we get into this um, crochet base, um, I just have to talk a little bit about I love this yarn, cotton yarn. I love, literally, I love this yarn. Like, I guess that's where they got the name from because their stuff is so soft. And my biggest gripe, and I know I'm not the only one that shares this opinion, but my biggest gripe with cotton yarn is that it's just so dry. And when it's that dry, it becomes like I'm touching like wheat or like fresh, ah, like hay, like I'm touching a hay bale or something. Like, yeehaw, like I'm not trying to have that in my life. So when I discovered that I love this yarn, cotton yarn, I was in Hobby Lobby. Thank God for Hobby Lobby. And when I went there, I was looking for something else and I just happened upon it because I didn't know it said cotton yarn. I just felt it and I was immediately like, oh, this is so soft, wow, what is this? And it said cotton, I said, they've got to be kidding me. I looked at the um, materials, like percentage, you know, we're on the, on the label that wraps the skein. They usually have that like, what it's made of part of the label and it said 100% cotton. So I don't know what they're doing to their cotton to make it better, but it is literally rocking my world. So this, um, particular project was actually very enjoyable to work with my fingers and um, yarn for me has to agree with me to the touch before I can use it. I don't typically use yarn just because of what it looks like. It has to feel good on my hands too because let's be honest, this is a therapeutic art form. We're not gonna just create something just for how it looks or for the person we're giving it to. Like obviously you want it to be soft to the touch. Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, right? Right, okay, okay. So going forward, um, I loved that, at first I thought this yarn was too dark of a gray color when I got it in the store. I said, wow, I love this now that I'm working with it. I think it's a nice medium gray color. I don't think it's too dark at all. Um, obviously, for some people it might be too dark, but if you go to repeat this pattern, just use a cotton yarn or you, and you can change the color if you so choose. I personally like this darker gray color. Like I said, this is a beginner to intermediate type of pattern. If you want, I can create a <laughs> tutorial on how to do the center single crochet stitch or the um, fair isle stitch, but that's not my channel's goal. I'm not here to make a bunch of tutorials. There are tons of artists out there that are incredible already at doing those types of things. I don't think that I need to be one of them, um, but if you would like me to do it because you prefer how I explain stuff. Oh my God, am I your new friend? Are we friends? <laughs> If you want to use um, a different stitch in making this, that's fine, but obviously you're gonna have to figure out your own gauge for this type of situation. And just so you guys know, I completely and 100% encourage changing patterns to fit your needs. Obviously, I'm writing this pattern down and putting it out to the world, and it is literally what has worked for me for this project. If you find a better solution, by all means, work on it, adjust it, and then please message me, because I'd love to know what you've discovered by getting interest sparked with my pattern base, and I'd really love to know what else you have to 
discovered because this is all about creativity, inspiring creativity. It's not just about follow exactly 100% what I do. Like I really want you guys to work on and get excited about breaking out of your comfort zone and being in your own mentality of how can I make this pattern awesome not just with my personal skill, but how can you make it awesome with your additional thoughts and how to upgrade the pattern. So, you, oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> See, I'm totally transparent. I am a forgetful person. Um, gosh, what was I saying? So now we have made our body of this cover handle, cover thingy and we are working into now the very last couple rows, rounds, excuse me, of this pattern. Now, this is where we're going to take our um, batting lining that we sewed together and made earlier, and we're gonna put that back into the inside of our new crocheted base. So, um, I don't like abusing the things I've already made um, as little as possible. Obviously, you don't wanna like upset the materials because they get finicky sometimes. So I went ahead and used my hook to help stuff the batting inside of this lining. So um, I do this a lot. I try to use my hooks as much as possible rather than like pulling things with my hands because my hands have oils on them and they're just like, they're just a little more aggressive than I like to admit them to be. So. I used my hook for this part, and then after that, um, you're gonna see a really interesting method that I use. Um, we are going to crochet the last couple rows, and, and here I added, I found that if I pre-pierced pre the lining with a thick and large-eyed and thick tapestry needle before using that, that hook to make the stitch and attaching whatever, you know, you're gonna read it in the pattern. But I found that using the tapestry needle ahead of time to pierce that lining made it so much easier for my hook to get in there and do its job. Um, obviously, I tried to be delicate with the lining because the lining is strong. However, when you do disrupt the structure of it by piercing it, it does start to get temperamental. So it, that is something I noticed with this fabric. Obviously, people aren't really going in and doing what I'm doing with this, so this was not something I read about online. I just kind of found later. Um, so do be gentle when you're pre-piercing it, and if you need to use a smaller hook to pull that yarn through, and then switch your hooks out to make the actual stitch so it's the correct gauge that you've been using the whole time, that might help you out. I didn't do this in this part, um, I just use my same hook to continue to drive through and pull that loop up but if that is something that you want to try when you go to try this pattern I highly encourage it because I think that will work out better for you all right also I don't know if you guys get this when you work with certain different new materials or whatever you discover new things about them that you didn't realize before but I'm working with this insult bright one of my favorite things about it is it has this weird crinkly like I don't know how to describe it. It's like a crinkly feeling and, and sound that it makes when you're cutting it and like working with it. And I'm, I'm weird, I like weird sounds. Anyone else out there like weird sounds like that? Leave a comment down below and let me know that I'm not alone when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> okay, and then moving on to this tail portion. Now let me tell you, you don't have to make this tail um, in the measurements of the pieces that I described. You can do it a little bit longer, you can do it a little bit shorter, but I just found that this was a great place to start so that when I attached them and made and then trimmed them later into the tail shape, I found that this gave me more to work with about feeling like I have to start all over again and cut new pieces. You know, you never wanna, it's better to be longer than it is to be shorter when it's making these tassels, I think. Man, and guys, I think I might be going to crochet maker purgatory or hell or whatever you want to call it, but this is where I broke my furls crochet hook. Yes, my furls crochet hook. This thing, I was so sad because, okay, when I was trial and error figuring out this tail, I said, okay, I know for sure that I'm going to make little mini tassels and then attach them to the unworked loops of the beginning foundation. Um, loop and I said okay great that's gonna be easy fine but I didn't really think in my head like okay like cotton yarn gets really dense really quickly when you add more pieces of it in one area I didn't think ahead of time and I didn't think that the cotton yarn was gonna be stronger than my hook so when I went to go pull through like six strands to make the tassel in this one section <laughs> 
I immediately snapped the tip of my hook. It is the most dramatic thing I've done in a while with my materials and my tools. I feel like I should put myself on probation with hooks and just like make myself use aluminum hooks to punish myself. But let me know in the comments below, have you guys ever broken a crochet hook? Now I have heard from some people that because these hooks are hand turned and they're not made with aluminum, they are so, like they're, they're great quality, but oh, here comes my cat. Hello? Hi, Oliver. <laughs> Hello, my kitty. Hi. He loves me. Give me a kiss. He's gonna lick my finger instead. That's awkward. <laughs> look at his ears. He looks like an evil kitty. I <laughs> All right, and then we get on to the part where we're trimming the tail. Now, the first tail, the first full finished like prototype of this, when I went to go cut that tail, Oh girl, I obviously I should not be going into hairdressing because don't ask me to cut your hair. Um, I get my hair done by a professional, so I have no business cutting hair and I had no business at first cutting this poor Eeyore's tail. <laughs> it was not the cutest. Um, I mean, I can still sell this tail. It doesn't look as jacked up as I'm describing it to be, but I did figure out a hack with cutting the tail and making it kind of tapered. So. Um, I, I, by the way, I chose, before I cut the tail, I chose a side that I wanted to be my right side, like the side that I was going to attach the bow to. Um, and you know, it's, when you sew these tassels on, you might have a better looking side than the other side. So I chose my favorite side of this tail, because obviously you can flip it either way. And that's where I decided to um, trim. That's the side of the side, that is the side, is the side that I decided to trim. So instead of trimming all the way around and trying to do this like layered thing with the tail, I actually just trimmed in tiers the yarn on that right side of this cover. And I think it worked better. It laid flat, when it laid flat on a table, it looked cleaner. Um, now when obviously you're using this to cook with and you're putting it on the handle itself, it doesn't actually like make a big difference. That's not the hero of the look of the pattern. But if you do want a cleaner look, especially when you're using this to sell at craft fairs, and you want to set these out and lay them out on display, it does look cleaner if you cut it this way. So, and also again, I encourage you if you find better techniques, please let me know. I'd love to hear about them. All right, and then the bow of this pattern is super cute. I've done bows like this before for, for little girls, making them these little like hair clip bows, you know. Feel free to use this bow though, like for other projects. Like it, I think this is a really cute, easy way to make a bow. Um, you don't have to make the center part, it's just a series of wraps to make that center part of the bow. And then it, it, and then you fluff it out a little bit and then you blah, 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 and it looks great, right? And the last, very last step that I did, which was like, a, you know when you get to that light at the end of the tunnel and you're just like, oh, we're here, last step. <laughs> and then you like barrel right through. I mean, th this is a quick project, but I still had that feeling, of course. The very last step that I did was sew that cute little silver button onto the very top of it. I kind of maybe marked it maybe like three or four rows down from the top, and then I sewed on that pink bow, and it looks so cute immediately when I looked at it before I even had a chance to like, like assess like the damage that I did beforehand and everything like that. I was just so completely pleased with how it turned out. I think that, um, I think I'm losing my, am I losing my mic? I don't know, I can't tell. All right, and just so you guys know, when I do release Disney or any fan fiction inspired patterns, it is my goal to also come up with a pattern that is kind of like a blank page pattern. It is no relation to any kind of character because I know there's some of you out there that are like, Nicole, I'm not a Disney fan. I'm not a Marvel fan. I'm not a fan fiction fan. I just want to crochet something fun, but I like your style and I hear you and I'm here for you. So I will be usually probably within the week of me releasing that Disney or character inspired item, I will be releasing a pattern that is the basic form of that pattern. So you can use that to your own creativity and your own making pleasure, okay? So check that out um, and watch out for announcements. I'll leave announcements here, but do follow me on Instagram, follow me in my shop on Etsy, and you will see those announcements there as well. What, what should I call these? I don't know. If you have an idea for the name of these kinds of patterns, let me know in the description below. Let me, tell me everything. Tell me everything.
But anyway, thank you so much guys for joining me on my vlogging journey, creating the Eeyore skillet handle cover. I had a lot of fun making it. It is, like I said, an easy to beginner type of difficulty and it is a day easy project. You can make this in one day and I hope you do enjoy the pattern. Like I said, this will be available for purchase on Ravelry and Etsy in my Etsy shop, Woven Tales Designs. Thanks for watching Crochet Chronicles. Please subscribe down below. Please subscribe. Leave me any comments and any reactions you had to this video and then please hit the like button if you did enjoy this so I know that this is something in the right direction if this is the first episode so who knows what we will have in store for the next time. Please also if you'd like to know the next video when it comes out hit that little bell button that will let you know when I have things coming soon. We all know as makers we can crochet something in like an hour or we can take four weeks to crochet something. It just depends on the project. So um, these first couple of videos I'm going to try to make them like shorter projects so that you can get more content um, headed your way. And thank you so much for watching. I really had a great time here. Have the most magical day and remember you can't spell crochet without the word T. <laughs> I don't know if that even worked that time. <laughs> Does that catchphrase work? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below, okay? Everything that I've listed in this video as a material, I have linked in the description below as well. And you can ask me anything. I am an open, transparent book, and I had so much fun being that way for you today. I hope you guys have a magical day and add a little magic to your stitches in your own way. The Woven Tales Designs. Look at it, so cute. I wonder how the ladies in QVC, like, like they find different ways to like display it. They're like, this way, no, this way. Oh, pink, oh, what do you mean, silver? Oh, yes, this is it. I love this. I am a housewife and I must have this. You are a housewife, you must have this. Oh, do you like me now? How do you like me now? What about this? It could be a tie. Oh, it could be a hair accessory, an earring. Chunch, stand, stop it Oh my god, Diana, is that you? <laughs> like, I feel like they always have different ways to do this. Disgust. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. Look how cute it is. Oh, wait, did I lose my mic again? Shit, I can't I feel like I keep losing my mic. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Look at him. Cairo? Ugh. Oh, okay. See that? See that? Talking back. Yeah, that's what I get. Blip, blip. And I have to pause because my dog is slurping water in the background. He's driving me crazy.